Glen Grant Aged 18 Years Space Side Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Time to get one? Stay tuned for the Whiskey Whistle review number 300! Hey everybody, Mark here on Whiskey Whistle sharing some whiskey awesomeness with you from Winnipeg, the center of North America. And today we're going to be looking at Glen Grant aged 18 years. Glen Grant 18 years. Brand new bottle here in Whiskey Whistle. And that's for the special occasion of the fact that this is the 300th whiskey review here on YouTube. All right, let's get this box open. What a gorgeous box. And I'll bring it up close to you and you see something interesting there. The Jim Murray little insignia. You see that there, the badge? Well, uh, this is the second runner-up of 2019. This is the third runner-up from 2018. And the second runner-up in 2017, this one is Scotch Whiskey of the Year. I think it's been Scotch Whiskey of the Year for the last three years. So that's just crazy. And let's look at that again, because this is just a gorgeous packaging. And really happy that they've actually put a, a little drawing of their stills here along with their unique purifiers that show people, that show everybody how it's made, which is cool. Because it wasn't long ago when in Canada, you couldn't even get pictures of stills because there was this big secret. It's no secret anymore. All right, let's get that out. Don't drop it, Mark. There we go. Bit of a tough pull there. All right. And yes, if you look there, you see another Glen Grant. That's the 12 year old, as I just dropped that one. Uh, Glen Grant, age 12 years. And then we also have this old Glen Grant. I'll show you that in a minute. Set that back there. We'll save that for the next review. Okay. Turn that so it's not shining like a, like a star. Okay, well, let's get that opened. All right. And then I'm going to pour it. After that, we'll talk about some cool stuff. Very cool stuff that you have to listen to. You will want to listen to. So let's get started. Grab that thing, get it opened. Really sexy bottle. Now, it wasn't always so sexy. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but let me just get this opened. And you know, when you when you open these for the first time, you really have to be um, precise to grab that little um, uh, pull tab so it doesn't get stuck. Then you have to go get a, a like a needle or a pen to get it open. Have you done that? I've done that many a time. I don't like doing that. Okay. Open that very nicely. I really like having that little band above there. If you are fairly new with whiskey, what I'm doing here is I'm getting that um, metallic band here to lay flat against the bottle. This is 43% ABV and a very beautiful bottle. Now this is unique to the 18 year old. The 12 year old does not have this raised cool gold little insignia there. So very cool. That is uh, James, I guess James R. Grant, one of the founders, the founder, I believe. And um, in case you don't know, Glenn Grant is now owned by, uh, sorry, Campari, formerly Chivas, now Campari, um, the Italian, uh, well, what is that, aperitif maker. And they own a whole lot of stuff now in, in the, the liquor world, the, the alcohol world. And they also own Glen Grant. It's actually the top selling single malt in Italy. Now, I've got some reviews that I discussed more about Glen Grant in the past. I'll put some links towards the end of the video for you to catch those. But be warned, they're a little bit campy, a little bit lo-fi. There we go. Mm. Now, I've always liked uh, Glen Grant since the first time I had it. And the story goes, I'm on a plane and they're selling Glen Grant 16, the former packaging. This would be 2014, I think, for $50 US. So I bought two. And I drank them all before I even started the channel. All right, we'll get this poured. And yes, if you saw, there's a new camera. I need, I need more. I need more. 
Oh, I spilled some on my jeans. Now my jeans are going to smell like delicious Glen Grant. There we go. Okay, a bit of a messy pour that I did, but done nonetheless. And there's nothing paper on that label to get damaged by uh, uh, the whiskey dribbling down. So we'll just leave it. Okay. And a nice um, wooden cork stopper. That's an improvement over the last uh, style. Okay, now we're going to let that sit for a little bit. Let me put what is called a whiskey hat or sometimes called a challenge coin, this particular style. There's all different types of whiskey hats that you can get. And this one is a special gift from, well, a good friend of mine, Roy at Aquavite. So I got this in the mail. I also got something else. I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes just to keep you hanging on here. Now, what a gorgeous presentation. So he's really gone all out to get boxes ordered and um, uh, stickers, or maybe he did them himself. And look at this beautiful presentation along with, see that there? Whiskey Whistle right on there. I support Roy Akovite on um, Patreon. And well, nicely, he supports me too. So that's great. In fact, he was my first patron on Patreon. And if you're interested in my uh, Patreon, uh, it's patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle. And as you can see, I just got a brand new microphone right here. And uh, that's with my money. The, the money in uh, my Patreon fund is just sitting there growing. Uh, I did withdraw once and uh, use that for a whiskey. Now I'm going to save that up for tech. All right. So get in there. Give me a hand because I need it. <laughs> Yeah, I want to get a, a new camera. I think the iPhone X, uh, XS Max will be the next one I get. And then I think next year I'll move into bona fide video cameras. Uh, all right, yeah, I was going to show you this. So got a new coin. This is my second Akabite coin. It's uh, really cool. Can you see that there? The water of life on the one side and evangelist on the other. So I guess I've been ordained. There we go. So we're going to let that sit for a little while. Generally speaking, if you've got an 18 year old, you want to let it sit for about 18 minutes in the glass before you even taste it, before you even smell it. You may want to smell it beforehand. In fact, I think I will do that just so that uh, just for completeness sake. And yeah, unmistakably Glenn Grant and um, well, I'll discuss that in a minute, what I think of, of that nose right off the bat. All right, so here's a mini of Glenn Grant, 10-year-old. This is from probably 2014, 2013, somewhere in there. Let's see if we have a date stamp. This is the 10-year-old. It's 40% ABV back then. And look at this very, well, very typical style of bottle back in the early... 2000s and going backwards so 90s 2000s this is kind of the way whiskey looked just a nice paper label and a scene can you see that there's two um two pipers i think it's two pipers and they're stopping to have a dram i think is that what i'm seeing there yep they've got a cask of glen grant yeah pretty cool uh, delicious stuff and look how lightly colored that is so minimal or maybe zero colorant added now this is all ex bourbon and I have to applaud them because a lot of current whiskeys are so focused on finishing so it's ex bourbon for 10 years finishing for six months and something else or two years two years is nice certainly very different so they're sticking to their guns doing mainly ex-bourbon casking for their whiskeys pardon me they do do some sherry and I hear their sherries are also very nice we don't see those in the general range at present I think probably in their special releases distillery releases you can find some sherry casks available and uh Peat wise, unpeated, minimal peat, probably has a couple of ppm, 
but I don't believe any peat is used in the making of uh, Glen Grant. And uh, one more cool thing to tell you that's coming up very soon. And this came along with uh, the, the challenge coin, the whiskey hat from Roy. And that is something that I've been wanting to try forever. I've been wanting to try this since Ralphie reviewed the distillery and was refused on camera at least <laughs> uh, to be able to drink uh, the Daft Mill um, Daft Mill whiskey on his distillery visit. And I was just so intrigued by the story and now I've got some. So I'll be reviewing that in this uh, batch of reviews. So you see that coming up soon. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna check out the nose of the whiskey first of all. We will check out the legs. What kind of legs can we expect from Glen Grant 18? And what do those legs tell us about how we're gonna enjoy the mouthfeel? Then, of course, we'll check out the nose, the palate, and the finish before giving it, what is it? Yes, a Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score at the end of the show. Make sure you hang around till then. Great, so let's get into it now, shall we? Now, I want to give that a bit of a whiff since I've been letting that uh, the nose collect under that uh, whiskey hat there. So let's see how it smells now. Well, it just smells amazing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so let's look at the color of Glen Grant. So, very pale. Pale gold. Perhaps a well, um, well towards harvest type of a wheat color. Very light. And 18 years, an ex-bourbon this color would seem pretty natural. So as far as E150A goes, probably very minimal. I don't think we have anything listed here because this is an American release. So it's 750 milliliters. How about that, right? Get that extra 50 milliliters over people in the UK. Anyway, so very nice color. And we'll check out the legs as well. I can already see some, boy, boy gorgeous. I was going to say gorgeous, gorgeous legs uh, trickling down there. So let's see what we can find from the legs of Glen Grant, 18 years, aged 18 years. All right, ready? Here we go. So what do we see for legs there? Very well defined, very slow trickling legs. And this would tell me that we're, we're going to have a very nice mouthfeel, probably very rich in the mouth probably coating and long lasting in terms of the, the silkiness in the mouth. And you can see really how extremely slow we see some legs drip, drizzling down there. Uh, oftentimes older whiskeys have slower legs. Of course, the higher the ABV, again, this is 43%. So the higher the ABV will have slower legs and unusual casks like let's say virgin virgin oak or some sherry sherry oak you'll find some also some very slow legs too and that would be the dissolved content um, the content from the cask that is you know being extracted into the alcohol all right so that's the legs now on to the nose Really excited about this. And again, just oh, before I just start, thank you, everybody, the subscribers of the channel on YouTube. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all the patrons, uh, all 12 of you. And thank you to all my Whiskey Tube brothers uh, and sisters out there. Um, now, there's a nice little clique of people. You know who uh, we are. We are. A oh, uh, very close knit bunch of guys, and anyway, to all of them, I say thank you so much for all the help and the encouragement to continually hone and improve our our craft. This is what we do. My wife, my kids, they're all so understanding and helpful. Uh, just 
Thank you, everybody. All right, on to the nose. Right away, you get some apricot pastry, apricot apricot pastry with um, uh, some of that uh, kind of glacé on top, like a uh, an icing. It's got a very sweet, very subtle, but very interesting nose. I get a little bit of something fresh, like uh, a freshly, freshly cleaned field by the rain, cleaned by the rain. So a field in the summer, in the spring, pardon me, cleaned by the rain. When I get in there deeper, I'm getting some citrus. This reminds me of Mackay's um, orange champagne marmalade. Delicious. And I can tell there's a little bit of something. Mm, what can I call that? There will be something a little bit tickly, a little bit sherbety. Um, on the palate, I can tell that that's what's uh, what's leading in this nose. Some vanilla and also some orange blossoms. Very jammy. The Mackay's orange champagne, also apricot jam. The apricot pastry. A little bit of vanilla there. Real French patisserie. Patisserie? Uh, I can't say it properly. Greg, help me. <laughs> now, compared to my memory, not as much almond as I recall. There's still a little bit of crushed almonds there. Crushed raw almonds, in fact. Well, I think that's about good for the nose. Let's get on to now the palate of Glenn Grant aged 18 years. Cheers, everybody, and here's to another 300 reviews. Mm. Huge, <laughs> what a huge palate. Yes, very sherbety, effervescent, ethereal in quality. It really takes over your senses. The nose was subtle, subtle and delightful and kind of delicate and uh, intriguing. The palate, however, the palate is altogether overpowering your entire senses and you really can't think of anything else while you're tasting this. It is just so bold. Hmm. Apricot and citrus fruitiness just builds and builds you also get a crescendo of dryness it starts out very sweet and 
sweet sour sort of a nice delicate balance then it just crescendos into a sweet and dry getting drier and spicier in your mouth there's also that uh, that sherbety effervescence of it that just tickles your palate Definitely mouth coating. Definitely a very rich mouth feel. Now it has been said that Glenn Grant does exceedingly well with age. <clears throat> and I think I'm getting a bit of an inkling of that here. Now I've had the 10, I've had the Majors Reserve. There's a review of Majors Reserve. Um, I've got the 12 here. I've had the old 16. These were all delightful. Unfortunately, I didn't get a review of the 16, did I? I might have. I'm not sure. I have to check. But that, it just went so fast because it was just such a nice drinking whiskey. Even at 40%, it was, it could fill the room in a sense. Let's have another taste here. Mmm. <clears throat> I'm getting a slight waxiness now. Boy, I should have polished that before I started. <clears throat> that might have been my hands, I guess, as I poured it. But nonetheless, a beautiful whiskey should have a nice polished appearance. It's an outstanding whiskey. I need another taste. Hmm. There's a vanilla custard. Candied orange. The finish now is, again, I'm tasting this for the first time. So talking about the finish, you kind of have to mention it as you go through without taking notes and without preparing and trying it a few times first. Goes down spicy, spicy smooth. You've got dried apricot skins. You have some kumquat where the skin is the sweet part. And even the, the dryness is very similar to that kumquat that leaves your mouth a little bit dry and fresh. I still taste some vanilla. I still taste some French pastry. Mmm. Really, really lovely. This is just a treat. I am so happy with this. All right, let's add a bit of water. Not going to add very much. I will add just about one milliliter. Oh, and if you've been watching uh, all this time, you'll notice that this is one of the constants that has remained uh, since the very beginning, along with this spoon. Interesting, right? Oh, and uh, the drying cloth you just saw there. 
Uh, that's been one that's been in my wares and strictly for cleaning whiskey glasses, drying whiskey glasses, polishing them since the beginning. I had a synthetic microfiber glass polishing cloth and it was good for a little while but after a few washes they sort of disintegrate and they will leave a trail of little bits of fuzziness all over your glasses so I had to jettison it um, so in case you were wondering okay with water you get more pastry you get a little bit of light brown sugar. The fruits are still there. It might be a little bit more balanced in a way with water added on the nose. Both are, of course, very interesting. Now, I didn't add very much, so I'm probably still around 41 or maybe even 42%. Maybe down to 40, but no, no less than that. The vanilla is really leaping out of the glass now. Okay, let's try that again. Cheers again, everybody. A bit drier at first, but it actually it seems to increase the fruitiness. And since that's sort of like the Glen Grant house style, I think it's a nice way to drink your Glen Grant 18. Mm-hmm. Vanilla citrus, vanilla custard with a little bit of maybe an orange coulis on top of it. Still very pastry-like. Hmm. Now, the finish in terms of length. The flavors last quite a long time. The dryness, of course, carries on, I'm guessing, probably 10, 20 minutes. The flavors seem to last a good minute or so after you swallowed. So the aftertaste, the finish, is another delightful component of the tasting of this whiskey. And the beauty of this line is that you have a straight up comparison between the 12 year old and then the 18. Hmm. As time passes, you're getting more and more of this vanilla custard coming through. Still very fruity. Everything is just wonderful with this whiskey. Well, super, super happy with this. And I think it's time to get onto the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Grant aged. 18 years, the 18 year old Glen Grant Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. What is that going to be? Well, folks, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Grant aged 18 years Single Malt Scotch Whiskey is going to be 93 out of 100. Yeah, you heard it. 93 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Grant aged 18 years. Oh, delicious stuff.
Uh, I'm really happy with that. And I'm going to have to sip that very slowly because it is hard to get here. It was in stock here in Manitoba. It sold out. Then at the Whiskey Festival, I went on the Friday and they had a, a few bottles of that on hand. So I bought them. I have a feeling that they clawed back some of those bottles strictly for the festival, especially after learning about the Jim Murray um, kind of, what can I call it? Well, the award from Jim Murray. Whatever you may think of uh, the Whiskey Bible of Jim Murray, it is a massive, massive influence on shopping. And any brand should be so lucky as to be named second best of the year or best of the year, whiskey of the year. This is the second best whiskey of the year. And I think I have to concur that it is um, pretty awesome. Hmm. Now, who would like this? Well, anybody who likes slightly sweeter styles of uh, single malt scotch will like it. If you like Glenmorangie, this is a definite brand that you have to try out for one of your next purchases. If you are into Ben Riech or uh, let's say uh, Tobermory, Kleinlich, um, Oban, you will enjoy some Glen Grant, absolutely. And if you are shopping, you do see the old range, don't think that you're losing out. You're actually gaining a bit of um, a history lesson of Glen Grant flavor. Anyway, so do buy the 10 or the 16. And Major's Reserve is their entry level. I think it's a very excellent entry level. I think it used to be a five-year-old. They still sell the five-year-old, I think, I think in Italy. It could be just the Major's Reserve now. But for five years old, it is just a very, very nice, simple, easy to drink, delicious whiskey that does not break the bank at all. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you subscribe to Whiskey Whistle. Hit that link right over there and click the bell so you're notified of the next Whiskey Whistles coming out. And don't forget about Patreon. Join me there if you can. And stay tuned. There's very cool things coming. Uh, there's going to be a 21-year-old whiskey coming up next. A single malt scotch whiskey. All right. Take care, everybody. Goodbye now. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe. And don't forget to give this video a like. And leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.